Let's talk about the difference between influence and manipulation. This is a Daniel Pet theory. <laughs> I talk about this in class at Wizard Academy and when I give the tour of the tower. So if you've ever walked around the tower with me giving a full tour, you've heard this story. Um, I'm Daniel Whittington. I'm the chancellor at Wizard Academy and Whiskey Marketing School. Blended scotch is what we're drinking today. So first let me define in overly simplistic terms, the things that I think separate manipulation and influence. So first manipulation, and now keep in mind, I'm gonna say at the very beginning, not all manipulation is bad. Movies are manipulation. Magic, magic shows are manipulation. Willing manipulation. As a matter of fact, that's what makes them fun. We want to go in and be manipulated into having a certain kind of experience and it's, as a matter of fact, bad magic fails when it stops being manipulative. When you realize the card's just in the sleeve, in the back pocket, and it, the illusion fails, the magic is gone. It's no longer fun. So <clears throat> we tend to think of manipulation as a uh, relationship and interaction with people and situations, and that's because that's mostly where we encounter it. Ooh. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's a bad way to live in that category. One, because it just makes you a really human being, but two, practically speaking, the effects don't last. So it's a bad way to do business. If you've ever been in a moment with another person or in a business situation where you had this feeling of like coming to your senses and going like, wait, hold on, what's wait, where am I? What's happening? That's manipulation. Right? If you started over here and you ended up over here and you just sort of got drug along or pushed along or shoved along, and then all of a sudden in one moment you're like, why am I sitting in this car? I didn't even want to buy a car. <laughs> right? Why am I holding this bottle of wine? This is, I don't drink wine. <laughs> I was at the retail liquor store and now I have a bottle of wine. I don't understand. That's manipulation. And it's not good. Th this is most sales training from like the 80s on that's starting to change now, but. It's called overcoming objections. And it's when you get trained specifically to just corner people and, and edge them and overcome any concern they might have until they have no choice but to do the thing you want them to or look stupid in that interaction, right? That's sales, by the way. Good sales is being of service and asking the questions to get to the truth of what's needed and then answering honestly whether or not you can solve that problem or whether or not you think you can solve that problem. On a practical level, we don't do that because we don't wanna be those kind of people, but also because that's not a great way to live. Influence, totally different. Influence is based on how your brain works and physiology and chemistry, how you interpret space and interaction and music and sound and the shape of buildings and color. In some cultures and furniture and housing is called feng shui, or this is art, paintings on a wall, uh, the color of a room, music. These are all examples of influence instead of manipulation. Influence, the, the shape of a building can change how you feel. Music is a mood influencer. If you wanna stay in a good mood, you can play good mood music. If you want, if you're not feeling, or you're angry, you can listen to angry music and reinforce. You can sort of use this little dial uh, to, to tune in to whatever emotion you wanna create inside your, your brain. That's influence. But there's a couple of key differences that will help you decide which one you're experiencing that I use in my own brain to make sure that I'm, we're always being careful because influence is very powerful. Um, and if used in an unhealthy way, can Venn diagram over into manipulation. But first let's talk Sassanac. So this is Sassanac blended scotch. This is the dude I've never watched to the show, but this is Sam Hewen who is the main actor on uh, Outlander, which was a book series and now the TV series. And he also has this travel show that he, and oh man, what's the other guy's name? All of a sudden is escaping me. They go around and visit things and they visit whiskey distilleries and they're really funny together. Uh, this is his brand, Sassanac, and he, uh, this is cool. This is another one of the celebrity brands. We have a lot of them in America. We're starting to get more in Scotland, but what I like about Scotland is 
a lot of the ones in Scotland are actually not just like, let's mix a bunch of stuff and put our name on it, but it's involvement. And so like Offerman's, which we're actually gonna review later this week, Offerman's connection with Lagavulin, that's pretty great, right? They're doing real things and, and Offerman really is a lover of Lagavulin. This, he partnered with uh, Michael Henry, master blender Michael Henry at Loch Lomond. And as far as I can find, what Michael Henry has said is he's been involved in every release of Sazenac since it began. I think this is probably second or third version. I don't, I don't know. I couldn't figure out the different, how to tell the differences between them. But um, so this is all Loch Lomond. And so the malts are a mix of nine to 20 year old malt barrels and the grain is Loch Lomond single grained. So this is, in theory, a single distillery product, a single distillery blended scotch, which is pretty cool. Um, and already on the nose, and I'm a big fan of Loch Lomond for what they do. They have this really, on the malts, this really brilliant, fruity, vibrant, citrusy kind of character to them. And um, I've even enjoyed their single grains that I've gotten some my hands on. But this one is absolutely lemon and honey cream and apricot, possibly peaches. And then it goes vanilla bean. And, oh wait, hey, there was a um, sort of a rounded clove note for a, like just a hint of a second. Yeah, this really is like lemon custard kind of dense sweetness and pound cake, and oh, I like it. It's, it's sweet and fruity in the way, you know the Madeline cookies, like the little like clamshell looking Madeline, La Madeline cookies? The way that those are sweet, but not cake, that's how this is fruity and sweet, but not candied and overly dense. It's a light touch. Oh man, it drinks exactly like it smells. The finish gives up a little too soon and then it actually gets kind of dry. Uh, I don't know if I would say peppery, but it gets it, or like oaky, but it's not either of those things entirely, but it is this sort of like, it drinks with that citrus, fruit, honey, vanilla, lemon, and then it just sort of vanishes, sparkles, dissipates, and the lingering finish is this sort of grain dryness. That's really interesting. I mean on the back of the tongue, the front of, of my mouth is still getting all this sweetness on the finish. It's a very nice blend. Man, if that was all blended scotch, we'd be better off. This, was, this is a great blend. Yeah, I don't have a ton more to add to that. It's just a really great blend, 46% alcohol. That's really well done. Uh, I would love to follow more on Michael Henry. I, knew, I know that he was at Loch Lomond. He's been at Loch Lomond for a very long time, um, but I don't know much about him. But uh, based on that, I mean, I'm guessing he's putting out all the Loch Lomond things, which I've always really enjoyed. But based on that, I really love his blending skills. That's fun. Okay. So, there are two ways in my mind you can tell the difference between influence and manipulation. If you don't feel like you get a choice as to where you land in an interaction, and you have this sort of like come to your senses moment, and you're like, whoa, I did not get here willingly. What's happening? Where am I? That's manipulation, right? With influence, you always get a choice on whether or not you want to participate. You can stand in front of a painting and you can choose whether or not you let the painting uh, impact you and, and you really experience it. You can listen to music and choose whether or not you tune it out or whether or not it, uh, you engage with it in a room or a space. You can choose whether or not to sort of allow this space to become a part of it and actually engage. Now, it will impact you whether you want it to or not, because it is based on brain physiology and chemistry and things like that. 
but you can choose whether or not you engage with it and go on the journey or whether you just sort of like it happens and you just block, block it as you can. It's absolutely a choice always. Manipulation is not a choice. Um, the other thing is manipulation falls apart when the lights come on. And what I mean by that is as soon as you're aware of it, it stops working instantly. So you'll be on this path and you'll feel like maybe, yeah, okay, I could be, uh, and then all of a sudden you end up somewhere and go, crap, no, what's happening? And then all of a sudden you look backwards and it's tick, 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 so obvious. All the little maneuvers and all the machinations and all the, to just get you into this place. And then you feel angry and betrayed and a little bitter about it, right? Like this is bullshit. Sometimes it happens in the moment. Sometimes you get home with something and then you're like, why? Why did I do, buy this? Why did I do this? How did I let myself agree to this job? How did I let myself get involved with this, you know, uh, business? Like this doesn't make any sense. And, but now I'm in and now it's honor on the line and eh, you got manipulated, right? Influence doesn't lose its power when you become aware of it because influence is based on how your brain and body works. And so you, get to choose whether you engage with it, but you don't get to choose whether it has a standing impact on you. It's sort of like exercise. You, you can work out and get on a treadmill and start running, and when you exercise, it, your body releases endorphins and chemicals into your bloodstream. Those are mood-changing chemicals. At the end of a workout, you always feel a little bit better. You don't get to decide whether or not those chemicals are released in your body. That's the side effect of working out. You can choose whether or not you listen to it or whether you hold on to the being pissed off that you had to work out in the first place. Or like you can choose to not really acknowledge and embrace the impact of that thing, but you can't choose whether or not the chemicals got released. You can't run on a treadmill and be like, not today you're not gonna release, or I'm gonna run this whole thing, I'm not gonna let a single chemical release in my body. That's not how that works. Um, color and the shape of buildings and music, those things are very real and you don't get to choose whether or not it interacts with your brain in certain ways. You do get to choose whether or not you acknowledge it, embrace it, and let it become a part of a thing. And so for us at Wizard Academy, we use patterns that are influential when we're trying to help people get in the right mindset for learning big things. And one of those patterns is, for example, when we do breaks, we need you to feel like you had a real break. And so don't just go, let's take a 10 minute break, we'll be back in 10 minutes or a 15 minute break. And then everyone meanders around. And then in 15 minutes, which always feels like it happened in three minutes, oh, I'm drugged right back in, right? So what we do is we have these curtains, we have a view of the whole hill country. As soon as we say, let's take a break, we take a song break. As we say, let's take a three song break and we crank the music so loud you have to yell to be heard over it and we open all the curtains and we pour wine for everybody. This is like nine o'clock in the morning. And because your brain's pattern recognition and those things are influential, it doesn't matter if you drink the wine or you don't want any wine, but other people have an open glass of wine or an open bottle of wine and a glass of wine at nine o'clock in the morning. There are patterns for alcohol before noon, loud music, interesting strangers, and a remarkable environment. And those patterns are powerful and they have nothing to do with school and business school and must learn. And that wakes your brain up and it makes you hyper alert and hyper aware as your brain goes, what the hell's going on here? And that's the space that we need you in. When we're done with that break, we close the curtains, we dim the, uh, the lights, we pull the music down and we start teaching again. And there's this total transition of like, oh, that felt like a real break. That's influence. You can choose when we open the curtains and turn on the music and pour the wine to not drink the wine, leave the room. It doesn't matter. That's fine. You don't have to drink. You don't have to stay in here listening to loud music. That's your choice to engage or not engage, but that environment creates very specific things. So I hope that's helpful. Influence is a powerful thing when you're trying to accomplish something with a group of people or in uh, communications, but never, never, never let it get to the point where people don't get a choice about whether or not they're involved. Cheers to you. I'm really glad you're here. So, influence, 
means that I should be able to influence you to like and subscribe.